Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna do something a little bit uh, scary. I'm gonna do a little bit of pruning on the Empress of China dogwood. This is an evergreen uh, Chinese dogwood behind me. And it's not necessarily about pruning it. It's more about the fear sometimes that we have in the garden of pruning certain plants. You know, you've got some prized possession in your garden. I spent uh, 20 plus years of my 38 years in this business doing some form of retail, either working in a garden center or owning a garden center, uh, farmer's market in Raleigh. And it was amazing to me that a lot of the questions I get in garden are kind of a little bit fear-based. People don't want to kill something. They're scared of killing it. They're scared of they're going to do something wrong somehow and something is going to go terribly, you know, terribly wrong. But sometimes you just have to, sometimes you have to jump in and, and give something, give something a try. Uh, this dogwood is in the, this is probably not the be absolute best time to be pruning it, but it's in the, it's, it's weeping over. And if we were to get any kind of hurricane, any kind of serious wind storm, you know, as the thunderstorms really pick up in August for us, typically, if any of those things happened, uh, where I think right now it's very vulnerable to just completely splitting open. So I want to take a little bit of the weight off of it. I'm not going to take a tremendous amount of weight off of it. I'm going to use the opportunity. It's got some dead limbs in the center here, and I'm going to go ahead and use the opportunity to start limbing this thing up a bit. Maybe bring it, maybe bring these very low limbs that are down here at the bottom up about two feet uh, at this point. We'll talk a little more about this um, Empress of China dogwood as we go, but I'm going to jump in and do a little bit of pruning on it. So I would kind of call this rescue pruning. Uh, rescue pruning just needs to be done when it needs to be done. Uh, typically, I think on most dogwoods, we would do significant pruning on them when they're dormant. Our native dogwoods, which unfortunately are not, um, there's some disease issues that have run amok through them, uh, there, but there are some uh, out there that have resisted that. They're incredibly tolerant of pruning. I pruned one post Hurricane Fran, which came through Raleigh in 96. I pruned one with a chainsaw at my old house. It was about four inches around to four feet tall and it came back as a beautiful tree. It's incredible actually how pruning tolerant they are. But again, that was uh, a tree that had been split open from another tree landing on it. Uh, and it came, right, it came right back from it. This of course is a very different dogwood. This one's evergreen. Uh, and again, probably in the winter is the best time to do this. But I will say these set their flower buds. Right now they have what is, they have a fruit forming on them right now from this year's flowers. Uh, there's clusters of these all over the place, but within these will get larger and then turn red and they're actually edible. Uh, and then from there, as those fall off, the new flower buds come on these. And we, this thing carries its flower buds through the winter and doesn't bloom until May and June. It's really wild how long the flower buds are actually on this particular, uh, this particular species of dogwood. The main thing I want to do, I think ultimately this entire branch all the way back to the trunk is going to need to be sawed off. I, I'm going to let the tree get a little bit larger before I do that. It's kind of this, this branch is kind of filling it out right now, making it uniform. But I think I'm going to get other limbs uh, on this, on a piece that's over here eventually to come this direction. And I've got another limb behind it that will fill this out. But I've thought that this limb in particular is a big threat to this tree the whole time. I probably should have gotten it off while it was smaller. It's this, it's really the angle of the branch right at the tree. So normally we, we would really want as, as vertical as possible as, you know, the, the angle of the branch coming off the tree um, to be more vertical like that. This one is like this. And so every bit of weight, and again, this thing being evergreen, we don't get a tremendous amount of snow or ice in Raleigh, but when we do get events, it typically leans more toward ice. Uh, and, you know, it wouldn't take a whole lot of ice to weight this thing down and crack that branch down toward the bottom. If we were going to get ice, I might that might be the moment I decide to saw this limb off uh, before it uh, destroys the tree. Because if it breaks off like that, it will peel down the bark on the uh, trunk of the tree. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to lighten this a bit. You have the option of deciding on these. You know, I, I want any growth that comes back out on it, I kind of want it to come to the outside of the tree and not grow back into the inside of the tree. So you have the option as you're pruning things, typically you'll see the buds, the, the, the dormant buds that are along the stem. 
and you can prune just above one that's going in the direction you want it to go on that side of the branch. Um, the, in this particular case, all I want to do is just take, I just want to take some weight off. This is actually surprisingly heavy. Uh, there's a lot of water in it. That fr fruit has formed on it. Uh, and uh, this is scary to prune this tree. This tree is like the back, kind of the backbone of uh, the Hort Tube, uh, <laughs> the Hort Tube uh, garden experience here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And one of uh, Steph's definite favorite plants, but I'll go ahead and take that one off too. And I'd probably like it better if I cut just above a spot right there. Make sure your pruners are super, super sharp. Uh, that's kind of key to this, to this operation. Uh, I'm gonna take the weight of that one off right there. We just took a quick break to make sure we had audio. We did a pruning video <laughs> recently <laughs> and didn't have audio. And it was, you can't put the limbs, you can't reattach the limbs back on it. A lot of videos I could dig the plant back up and replant it or whatever. But these, these you, can't, you can't fix. Uh, but you can see, you know, just lightening the load there, how much more vertical that branch is. And I think overall I've left additional, you can see, you can see where I've cut it here. But when it's upright like this, you really can't get an angle to see uh, that I've cut this. Um, I think that looks okay. Uh, and again, I've left enough of this growth down here below. We're going to get that fruit and we're going to get the, uh, you know, lots of additional buds on it. Here's another uh, branch that's hanging low here. I'll just cut the bottom off of that one. You won't be able to tell at all uh, that I cut it. And let's find another spot uh, in here. Here's another one that definitely, this back area needs to be done as well. And all, again, all I'm trying to do is remove enough weight that hopefully it doesn't tear itself apart at some point. I'm gonna sh wanna show you on this branch right here, how it has this branch coming off the bottom uh, right there. That's the one I'm actually gonna take off. And then you can't see that I cut it at all but it lightened the load quite a bit. And again, this stuff's heavy, surprisingly heavy on this tree. Uh, this, you know, evergreen dogwood, these individual leaves and the stems are actually su surprising. I, now I know why it's so weighted down out here. Uh, I'm gonna take that off. And again, any of these kind of under branches that are down there. And then I might go ahead and take this back to here like that. Oh, it had a flower still on it, Steph just said. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and take the end of this one completely back like that. Um, so it do, does still have a couple of flowers on it, but all right. This thing was kind of shaped like Michigan where I had the little, little thumb in the mitten over here. I'm going to take a little bit of this side off so it won't look quite as much, <laughs> much like that, but I always said it was the, was the shape there. Again, this is another, this one's very vertical. And so it's holding itself up a little better and a little more upright, but I wanna take some of this weight that's hanging over the side uh, off of it. Holly's out here with me. She's, uh, she thinks she's helping this morning for sure. We're gonna put her back in the house in just a minute because she's a, uh, we are having the craziest morning temperatures. I have never seen it. it we have, we're backing off on the daytime temperature some this week, but the nighttime temperatures, there's not a day in the next 10 days that's not uh, below 70. I mean, it's just wild. 75 degrees is kind of our normal uh, nighttime temperature right now. And I'm gonna take one side of this one off. This will be a, I don't know if that looked all that great. I could take the rest of this one off, I guess. I don't know if I want to take it down that much or not. Okay, I may come back and take this one as well. And I am gonna take that whole piece right there, Steph. That's a big chunk. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do the same on that one right there a little bit. Okay, all right. Yeah, I know, but it needs to be done because otherwise the, the ice is, something's going to tear it apart at some point. It's coming. I don't know what's coming, but something's coming. 
Uh, and then we're going to be really sad when it's cracked in half out here in the front garden. And I can't do anything about it at that point. Again, I'm mainly just tracking back to some place on a branch where there's a split. And so when I make that cut in the center, it still has two branches coming out and you can't really see that I made a cut there. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the way to do it. I can't really, a little harder up here at the top <laughs> to, to mask uh, what I'm doing, but uh, you know, all I'm, at the end of the day, you're really just trying to make cuts that lighten the weight on it, but also you know, make it look like, a, I don't want to make it look like I butchered it. Uh, ultimately and I may end up needing some sort of ladder to cut this one up there I'll, I'll get a footstool or something to do that but we'll come down here stuff and go ahead and clear the lower branches off of this okay you can see we've got definitely as we're pruning we want to take off any dead or dying material the nice thing again look at this dogwoods have lots of dormant buds and this is a great example of that right there they will regrow. I mean, I could cut, I could saw this tree down to here, if, if you could, if you see that. So there are lots of dormant buds, and it looks like they're right below the limb that was here. So there's a dormant bud there. Uh, there's a dormant bud below each of these. It looks like. Uh, so they will potentially recover from even catastrophic damage. But if that catastrophic damage involves peeling the bark all the way down to the ground, uh, it's not going to be able to recover. Again, just making nice clean cuts and getting this thing cleaned up. There's actually new growth coming all the way from the ground. It's another example of you know how capable this plant is from coming back. This Empress of China dogwood will get about 15 feet tall, maybe 12 feet wide, something like that. Ultimately, it will take a lot of sun, and this one is basically in full sun, but the uh, roots are shaded. Uh, it's now shading its own roots, and that is very, very helpful with the dogwood. Typically, we think about where dogwoods grow, they grow on the edge of the woods so that they have their feet down in the shade, and they have their tops out in the sun. So that's true with this Chinese dogwood uh, as well. Just trying to get anything that's actually just dead in here as well. All right, we'll stand back and see what that looks like. This particular dogwood is hardy in zone six to nine. It's not readily available. It's been hard for growers to uh, grow it. Um, and it's this video, although this, this dogwood is beautiful and when it's in full bloom, it's absolutely incredible, is more about <laughs> encouraging you to get out and uh, take a chance sometimes and get things pruned, uh, get things... Uh, Sometimes you got to rescue uh, things in the garden, and, and it, you know it takes a little bit of a, uh, you know, it's, it can it can be a little bit scary to do these kinds of uh, to do these kinds of projects in the garden. But again, I think in the long run I'll be better off for having lightened the load on this uh, lighten the load on this thing. There's still some dead, a little bit of dead material here and there on the inside of it, and you know I want to clean any of those up out of here anything that's helping you know get air and you know won't accumulate ice uh, down in here just again just small the small brown limbs on it this is another one that i'm going to cut the height out of real quick um does that other piece need to come off right there uh, there is a link going that way maybe okay all right, I'll come around there and take a look at it. I'm gonna get, I need to get a step stool to get the height out of that one. A few more uh, dead branches in here that I wanna clean up. One of the, uh, some of them just pop right off. Again, there's no light down in the middle of this plant, so that is why some of these little, little branches fade over time. We're gonna get a little more light down in the plant. Uh, that'll be good. But again, I don't wanna cook the roots. You know, that's, that's one thing, it definitely is does not want the uh, roots cut. We've actually taken a ton of weight off of this thing. Uh, I've tried to prune it in such a way that it didn't look like I had pruned it, uh, but we have, and there's a big 
giant pile out there on the street that can end up uh, as mulch later. And we can use it to mulch itself. If there's any weird vertical pieces coming up in the plant, you know, I'm gonna get those off. Uh, it's definitely just gonna cause a problem later on. You can see through it a bit, but that's okay because you, and from both sides, now I actually want, again, I wanna get a little light down in there, but there's tons of new growth in the center of this thing. So it'll fill back in and be a nice screen again out here. And I've slowed it down enough that it can, we can get some additional um, girth on these main stems here to hopefully hold it up better in the future. Sometimes your, your plants outpace, um, you know, you know, how much they can actually uh, hold up. And, and one of the things in tree growing um, that, that growers actually do is they put them really close together in the nursery so that they grow really fast, racing one another for light a bit. And that ends up with these really skinny whips where you end up with four and five, four and five foot tall things, but they're only this big around. You know, that would just wouldn't happen in nature. If it had room to grow, it would be much thicker than that at four or five feet. Um, so you see that on a lot of trees where when you get them, you probably need to slow them down just a bit. Pruning in the summer like this, you can definitely get some burn on the foliage. And this thing's so open and most of the branching that I took off, I took off the under branch, right? And I didn't take off the one that was on top uh, because by taking off the one that was under, I was able to reduce the weight, but not change, you know, the basic structure of the tree. And also I didn't expose a bunch of leaves that hadn't been in the sunlight. So there's less likely to, uh, less likely to burn uh, going forward, but there'll be a leaf or two that hasn't been in the sunlight all summer. That's definitely gonna see, see a little burn on it in these 95, 96 degree days. Again, not ideal here in the middle of uh, summer. It's not something I would recommend unless again, you need to rescue something. Something is obviously going to be problematic uh, if you get a big storm or something. So I'm rescuing it from itself, despite the fact that the conditions aren't necessarily ideal to be doing it uh, at that time. And it's got, it still has tons of fruit on it and it will still has tons of um, ends of the growth from this year that will form next year's flowers. So it's still gonna be covered in flowers next year haven't done any damage to that if i went through here and and tip pruned every branch this late in the summer it unlikely have enough time to flush back out and set flowers so i haven't done any of damage to that one thing about limbing it up this is such a small lot here in raleigh and we're if you're following along with our big tour that we're uh, in the process of shooting out here uh, we do limb up the taller things just to get them up and out of the way so that we can grow other things in and around them. So as this thing lifts up over the years and it will continue to be lifted up, including that big sawing that big branch off the side and making it just a three trunk uh, tree in the future. Uh, as that happens, you know, the things that are under it or around it will be much happier. We've got an Agastache that has gold foliage and it's been stretching out here the whole year out from under this tree it's finally going to have some light down on it and i'm going to give it a bit of a haircut to make it a little bit fuller we've still got a few months for it to bloom there's a, a, a caradonna salvia over there that's laying flat to the ground because it hasn't had enough light it's going to have enough light now so we've done it's been beneficial to not only the uh to the dogwood but also the things that are around it because um, it was just swallowing everything here as it was getting wider and broader and growing all the way down to the ground like that so there you go sometimes you got to jump in and prune something <laughs> you know to to rescue it in some way and you know post hurricane fran had to do a lot of these kind of things in a very established garden um you know at my old at my old house and sometimes things come back really well from it and you know not all the time they don't always come back you know well from it but this type of pruning right here you can get away with pretty much any time of the uh, year that you need to take a limb off here take a limb off there to keep it from being destroyed um, by a storm so there you go that's my uh <laughs> that's the thing you know so having sold plants for so long i can see you know there's a lot of uh just a lot of anxiety we'll call it won't call it fear we'll call it anxiety around pruning shrubs planting shrubs moving shrubs or trees or perennials or whatever it is, but sometimes you just got to jump in and do it. So thank you guys so much for following along with the channel.